Hey guys, welcome to a random Saturday morning live. <laughs> We're like, uh, are we gonna edit a video? Uh, let's just go live and show them. We've got enough we could show them on a live video. So we've been we have been filming. So at some point, Zeb will have a behind the scenes of all the finishing stuff we're doing here on the addition at the farmhouse. But we're going to show you guys some design choices. We've got a great ceiling going up that I'm super excited about. Our tile is in for both the showers. They're kind of amazing. We spent a couple. The tile's hours. not installed. It's we have it. Yeah, it's in. <laughs> like we have the tile. Um, and uh, we spent a couple hours talking to our tile guy about design choices. So we're super excited. We actually don't normally hire stuff out, but our showers are massively huge. And so we decided that was one thing that we could afford to hire So we'll out. have three things that we've hired out. The foundation work, the HVAC, and the tile in the bathroom showers. So Other than that, it's all us. So let's, I want to show off my hard work. Let's, let's show them the insulation. The insulation. Jamie has been insulating not finished tell them why you've been having to be so diligent about it why oh because i <laughs> scheduled the insulation inspection at 7 30 monday morning zeb does not like to schedule inspections till he's done but i like to schedule inspections because a little incentive to get stuff done yeah so we're hustling getting the insulation in you can see it back here we still have to staple it so it'll get nice and smooth when we're done um, some people recommend taping it it's not required for code and we've already flashed all the inside let me show you what we mean by that so we had some spray foam insulation left over from our roof project that we did um, on the old part of the house so we've already flashed all the edges with they the can't spray see that. foam there you go. oh can you see can that you see now? the other side yeah you can see the spray foam all around here where we flashed it and there's no there's no air leaking through that so that's why we're not gonna tape. Cause that's the idea behind taping is that you don't get air migration. Yeah, so most of your heat loss is, if you use an infrared camera, is all around the edge of your stud walls and where the sheeting lines up. Um, so we, that's why we hit it with the spray foam and then put the insulation in. Because if there's any areas that get mushed or aren't quite full, they're now gonna be taken care of by about an inch of spray foam on all the seams. And that spray foam that I have is closed cell. It's R8 per inch, so, yeah, it's, so. it's pretty good stuff. <laughs> so we have more than R19 in our walls, which is required. Um, and a little pro tip about insulation, you don't wanna mush it. You wanna just lightly put it in. And it's gotta be fluffy. And I actually need to go zhuzh a little bit of it, but if you hold the top of the insulation and you pull out the tabs on the side and shake it a little, it just like lines <laughs> up nice and neat. Um, it's like a blanket. You it, gotta, you gotta shake it out. You gotta shake it out. Um, and I stopped the staple this. So I went ahead and put it all in, but I'm going to come today and staple the side. So it's all nice and neat and we're ready. Um, but we do have a video on some insulation stuff. So when we get it all done, you guys can see it. Cause I learned a few tips. I even taught Zeb. So yeah, she was, she was cutting it like a pro. I'm like, Ooh, what's that? If I have to do manual labor, I want to know what I'm doing. So I looked it up. Okay, All right, so, let's, the ceiling. It's so way more exciting than insulation. So some of the ceiling has a couple little sags I've got to fix where I've got to put some extra reinforcement, but let me show you this. Well, and when we put the shiplap up on the sides, it'll kind yeah. of hold up the edges a little bit. Yeah, so it which comes is why I'm sheets. not worrying. Yeah, it's a four by eight, four sheet. By eight sheet. Some people might call this T111, but it's not. It's smaller, it's, it's a four inch on center. Yeah, I'll, I'll come bring the board over. We'll bring the board to you. So I believe that Lowe's calls this sheeted shiplap. I call it beadboard. It's not actual beadboard because it's not individual strips. Um, but it comes in skinnier. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's still early. It comes in skinnier and wider. We went with the wider. Can you guys see that? And once it's painted, that's when you can really see all that coming through and the nice thing is because it's plywood you're not really gonna have a lot of bleed through issues because the knots aren't super deep so not a lot of tannins in it you could also do walls um, I plan on doing all the closets with this because I don't see any need to shiplap closets and this is what's going on the ceiling we'll show you what it looks like so this is a uh, common 11 30 seconds rough sun four inches on center shiplap is what it says on the tag yeah so that's what it is from uh, Lowe's but yeah, that's what it looks like. You can see there's this weird seam um, right here. Kinda. And I've, I've done my best to mask it, but it's still there. Yeah, you can, you can be, see the line running down. So most rooms, you won't really notice the seam because they're not as big. Our master's huge. So we will wind up doing a grid pattern 
on the ceiling to A, hold it up, but also mask that seam. And yes, this is what we used on the old part of the house on the vaulted sides where we weren't shiplapping. Yeah, so up, up high. We decided this would be the easier way of beadboarding the ceiling and it actually looks pretty cool. The only trick that's hard on this is that when you're cutting these out, it's not like drywall. If your hole is off a little bit, you can't just go back in there with some more mud and tape and fix it. You have to be really exact on the placement of where you cut your holes out for your lights and your duct work. The benefit is that once it's up, it's ready to be painted. Drywall is like four steps in a hot mess. We've had a lot of people ask us why we put the floors in already. Um, a, because it took a lot of time, but B, because like shiplap and this kind of roofing is not as messy as drywall. We've got a little bit of sawdust on the floors, but the vacuum in the broom just well, zipped I mean, that right up. We gotta sand the floors anyways. It's gonna um, be a whole lot of Real quick, sawdust. let me show you what I'm using to lift that, because I do have to do drywall in the garage. I went down to Harbor Freight. This was $180. Not sponsored to tell you that, just want to let you know where I got it. It works great. It's a drywall sheeting lift. It can do up to 150 pounds. So it'll lift two sheets of drywall at a time, your standard four by eight, five eighths uh, drywall. But I'm using it to lift these panels up. Still have to fasten that one there. But so it, it's taking a while to get them up. It's taking about half an hour per panel, but they're four by eight. They cover 32 square feet, so it's not too bad. Okay, so we had a question about why we staple the insulation when we're gonna shiplap. The shiplap will hold it from falling out, <clears throat> but the stapling, when you pull open the tabs and staple the side, it keeps it from falling down. Because what will happen, and what happens in most homes, is that over time, the weight of the insulation, it'll lose some volume. We all lose volume as we get older. <laughs> <laughs> you gain it and you lose it. Anyways, I'm things gaining, start I'm to... gaining volume down here around where my belt goes and my cheeks are thinning out. Yeah, that's why there's filler. <laughs> Zeb doesn't do that. Um, so things start to fall, right? Like over time. So if you staple it, even if it loses volume, it's not going to slide down in your walls. And once it's inside the shiplap, it's not like you can go back later and put it up you'd have to pull the ship lap down yeah. so stapling especially important on the top a couple more all the and way it's down it's something you wouldn't ever really even notice you might if you took like a, uh, a scanner where you could sense infrared heat you might be able to see where your gaps are in your insulation if you didn't staple it but it's not it's not that big a deal i don't think but jen says too much idea. pie too much pie i had a lot of pie i've been being very diligent about eating all those pies and you know what's funny i'm not a big pie eater like i'm like yeah a piece on thanksgiving i'm done all right i'm gonna take we're gonna come back out here and i'm gonna okay. take the camera off of the tripod so we can show them kind of some yeah, design we're elements the tile. we've got lighting got some fun stuff going on i know you guys have already seen some of the bathroom but i think this kind of pulls it together well it's 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 getting ready like once once the insulation inspection happens monday it takes jamie about an hour to do a wall so i mean we'll have a lot of this as soon as we get the go ahead we'll have a lot of this ship lapped pretty quickly yeah i actually already have a lot ship lapped up we'll show you here in a little bit but i had to stop to help zeb because he's like um the inspection's happening so let me show you tile <laughs> we promised you guys so this is what's going in the shower the floor is going to have this hex this is from Lowe's. It was $3.98 a sheet, so relatively inexpensive. Um, I was looking at like $12 a sheet, and I had to like lower my expectation um, because our shower is ginormous. And then this is a four by 12 subway, which when you have a big shower, this is great. You can also even use the bigger ones, but just know the bigger tile that you get, the more likely you are to have hollow centers. And if you have any flex or wave in your wall, which absolutely happens, then it makes it really difficult with larger tiles. So I went with this because it's like a medium oversized subway and it's a really just classic bathroom look. Um, but to make it a little bit more interesting and much to my tile guy's dismay, we are using black grout. So we are <laughs> going to be getting a water softener because the worst thing with black grout, it doesn't get dirty, but it will get hard water spots. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna make sure to seal it really good. And I'll probably use um, a product called Rain X and that'll keep my shower looking good and we're going to show you where it, where it goes so this is the world's never largest mind, shower never mind the door yeah this is the toilet door this shower is bigger than our walk-in closet at our current house this, this shower <laughs> is almost the size of our entire bathroom 
Um, it's like seven by eight. This is the long wall here. We're gonna have um, two. It's like our one splurge, and we we our tile guy works in some pretty high end homes. He's like, "What? You didn't heat the floors?" He was teasing us. Yeah. So, and we're like, "Nope, nope. This is our dream home on a budget." <laughs> so there, there was a few things that I felt like I wanted some wow factors, and we had the space, so it just didn't make sense to not do that, right? So I'm like, there's space here. So to give you an idea, um, the walls are gonna have the white subway tile. We are actually gonna have a couple of insets. So this will go up in the insets. There'll be a shelf here. We'll have one opposite this wall over here. Um, and then we actually have benches going in. Um, He's gonna cut these down. He cuts these with like a regular handsaw. They're yeah. pretty easy to cut. It's just foam, but it's pretty dense. So it'll hold a lot of weight and it makes it really easy to just tile over this. You can um, use, like, frame out a wall a bench, but many times those leak. So these are a couple hundred dollars for the pre-made benches, but worth it in time. And we have two benches going in. This one is almost four feet, and then we have a 32-inch bench opposite this on the other side. So nice places to sit. We have two shower heads going in here. I think the box is here. Do you have the box with the shower head there? Yeah, well we have this. So the thing about these foam seats, you can frame these out like Jamie was saying, but what happens is if you get like a small little leak or you get, uh, I mean, you you eventually with, with wood, you're gonna get some sag and it causes the tile to crack and have issues. So this foam, it doesn't sag. If it does leak, it's not going to deteriorate when it gets wet. Um, it's just it's just really nice. And it goes above the shower pan. So even if the, the bench has a leak, the shower pan will catch it underneath. So. All right, sorry guys, this is like quite the box situation here. All right, shower's open, shower head is open here. I just wanna kind of show you, where's the fixture? Is this the shower head? Um, I think that's the fixture yeah. down below. We could show them in your, it's down Yeah, in we'll your... show them. We'll have to show you guys in the other one. There's a lot of parts here. It's not assembled and it doesn't look we like We have one apart. assembled, so we'll, we'll show you. Um, I ordered my shower heads on Amazon. We have two going in. There's a big rain head with a wand. And then it actually has a spout on the bottom to wash your feet. Kind of like, or you could put it in a tub, but it's great if your feet are really dirty, so. So one, one light in here, which is going to be plenty. Yeah. It's these can lights give off so much lighting. Um, and then there's, there's lights we have here. Let me put it back. Well, just hold it for them so you can see. We do have the lights picked out. Did you get these? These are from Ikea? These are from Ikea. Um, as far as pendant lights go, they're pretty inexpensive. They actually are sold out online, or at least at our Ikea. I think it was like $39.99. So these are actually going to hang on each side. We're gonna um, do two. Shower. You can show them where the cutouts are. So I've got the right. cutouts up there. Um, we're gonna do two lights there, and then there's a can light here, and there's one over the tub. The tub, this tub goes over there where the lift is. Um, and then we'll have a big mirror right here, and then this is gonna be a cabinet for towels and things, um, kind of like a little linen closet in the master. But there is an outlet over there because Jamie's like, I don't want to see the toothbrush uh, power charger things. Yeah, it's going to be a while before Seb builds a cabinet or before I find like an antique one. But I hate, we use power toothbrushes and I hate them on the sink because I don't think they're hygienic. I like them closed away and they're ugly, right? So we, that's why there's an outlet. So whatever we put here, Zeb will cut it out. There'll be a shelf. Toothbrushes will be in there hidden away from the world like they don't exist. Um, the cool thing, we've showed you guys this buffet before, um, but we've got double sinks. This is from Ikea. These are from Amazon. Um, if you do shopping ahead of time and you read reviews and you want matte black, Amazon really is a great resource. If you go to a specialty store to get matte black um, faucets, you're going to pay a huge premium for them. And what were Lowe's those, like $70, $80 a faucet? <clears throat> No, like 40. Oh, 40. Yeah. yeah. You you pay upwards of 100. And maybe they're not like high end, but our kids beat the heck out of stuff, so I just really liked the uh, the water yeah. trough style spout. So a little bit of modern mixed in with something that's old. Uh, like this is kind of a modern sink design, but I really liked it because the sink it fits. we got from IKEA, right? Yeah, the sink came from IKEA. It fits really well with what we've got going on. And then I'll give um, you a close up of the sink. Never mind the dust, but it's just kind of got like a fun little basin sink here. But it's raised up enough that we had a fun, nice lip. And we could have, I could have recessed this down, but I liked how it sat up above. 
Zeb, how do you get the whole light vent so accurate for the ceiling? Okay, so what I'm doing is I put it on the lift. I lift it up right into place where I want it. I crawl up over the top of the 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 uh, trusses there, and then I draw the circle. I drop it back down. That's gonna be difficult. Then I once cut it out. Up there. Um, it won't be too bad. <laughs> <clears throat> it's just I gotta get up there and and draw it out. But they make they make a thing where you can. So I was gonna use my laser. I have a laser that I can. It's actually a um, for measuring, but. I use it to line things up. I was going to set it on the floor and just center it and then mark my board, but I haven't tried that yet. I might on some other rooms, I might test it out in a closet, but that's the way I've been doing it. And that's why it's taking about half an hour per panel. The nice thing is like when you guys, like if you use drywall or whatever, like doing the texture and stuff is really hard. I don't like texture. So to get a really super smooth drywall finish is a really hard or B really, really expensive. Um, to get it's like there's a word for it like ultra smooth or something and because I'm kind of a nerd for like finishes that are ultra period smooth. authentic you know I was like I can't have one of the mop ceilings in here I want so, it to be similar to what would have been in here back in the day yeah lath and plaster would have been was when we took out thousands of pounds of it out of the old part of the house and then we put ship lab back in but that's what would have been on here in place of drywall yeah and beadboard's really common we actually have the old beadboard on the outside of the house this obviously isn't beadboard but once it's painted it's going to look really similar to that yeah. oh, i was going to show them this is really cool this um oh this can they we're going this? flying again sorry guys Hanging out so it doesn't leak. So I've, I've got it. I've actually got it hooked in so that I could turn the water off show for up the here. inspection. This is for the tub. So picture like white shiplap back here with this, and this will be centered right here on the wall with a nice that the whole house is just black and white. So white shiplap walls, white beadboard ceiling, black doors, a whitewashed um, hardwood floor and then all the features are all this matte black situation. But if you look at the house- and There's like, already a few scratches on here. Why, why are which there scratches? Uh, because- Did you not hang it on the nail good? No, I did hang it on the nail good, but I remember telling you <laughs> to leave it in the box. So right behind Jamie's head is the mount for that. You wanna grab that brass piece. So this screws down to your floor and then it's got a, um, it screws down in and that's what holds that Does up over the have a black piece tub. that goes over it? Yeah, it's right behind your head too. Oh. Oh, okay. So there. So that really covers see. that brass and Nobody's going to see that. It's back behind the, tub. behind the tub. Like, you can see where it goes through the floor down there. Yeah. So, Zeb has to finish putting the hardwood. I have, I have, uh, I have a little bit of hardwood. Jamie has a real struggle getting them in um, because it's, it's pretty, uh, it's, it's not hard. It's just takes a little bit of strength to maneuver the, uh, the small pieces because you have to basically pry them in with a little crowbar. And wouldn't then be, staple them down. Wouldn't be so hard if we didn't use seconds. You can't hit them with a hammer. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's one of those things where we used inexpensive flooring because we're going to spend twice as much just for the labor in our showers um, as we spent on the entire flooring for 2,600 square feet because we bought seconds. All right. I'll show you the shiplap that's finished. The shiplap. Lots of... It, anywhere there's an interior wall up here, Jamie is trying to get that shiplap done. We did take a break for some insulation. This is the one do, spot. We can't do exterior. This is the last piece of insulation we gotta put up. We can't ship lap these until our inspection, just the interior yeah. walls. So this is the entry to our, the master bedroom. And, and you can see, doors. you can see where Jamie can reach on the stairs. I'll have to finish that for her. Um, not, not a big deal. I'll just, what I do is I have a big A-frame ladder that adjusts and you just kick one of the feet down longer on the stairs and it's works pretty I feel well. Like it's going to be like level 10 when you put the beadboard above the stairs. Uh-huh. We also have a hanging light fixture going up over the stairs that we thrifted. So you guys will see that coming in soon. We've got to spray paint it black. Shiplap, I had my friend Mel come over the other night and we knocked out a ton of shiplap. So this is Zeb's editing loft. It's got some nice light. Yeah, you'll he come up the stairs and then the desk is going to go right over here and we've got the window there so and i've got a bunch of outlets so lots yeah. of power in this here this is gonna have a big we have a drafting desk from lehigh high school that's from like the 30s and that's gonna be his editing desk so that's super exciting and it's nice out in the open because that edits a lot so he can use his uh noise canceling headphones but still be with a family and not be like hidden away somewhere 
So, so this shiplap is about six dollars for a six by eight six inch by eight foot length. Um, it's a, it's definitely a little more costly up front than drywall because the drywall sheets are like twelve dollars or whatever. We'll but see. then you have to mud them, you have to tape them, and the labor involved. By the time you calculate that, I got a bid to get the drywall done on the house. And it was over twenty thousand dollars to have a crew come in and do the drywall. And right now we're at about three thousand dollars on shiplap, and I think we have enough to do the whole house. So we will be between the B board, which was actually really economical, like twenty two dollars a sheet for four by eight sheets, and this shiplap will be about five thousand dollars for the entire house. Um, we've had a lot of questions about drywall under the shiplap. In our area, it is not code to have drywall under the shiplap. So if this was wood shiplap, like what we have in the old house, that would be a little bit different because that is not like a, a fire block, right? But there are certain MDF shiplaps and things that are rated, like this is like a level one, whatever, um, whereas wood would not be. And we only have wood in the old part of the house and behind that there's like block wall, which is a fire block. So in our city, we don't have to have drywall behind this um, particular kind of shiplap, and we only have to have drywall in the garage. The inside of the garage ceiling and all the walls um, have to have basically like a fire block vapor barrier. We have to use 5 8 gypsum board, yeah, so, which is drywall. So we will be drywalling, <laughs> but just drywall and tape. You don't have to mud the garage. No, you have to mud it. No. You, don't have, you just have to mud the seams. Oh, you have to mud the seams. That's what it is. But you don't have to like texture it because it's just a garage it basically needs to be airtight so that carbon monoxide from your cars starting in there or like if you're storing a five gallon bucket of gas for the lawnmower or whatever it is yeah. like that it can't in the garage that's why you got to do the garage check with your city on local code we we are like this with our um code enforcers because we love lehigh city so we ask them all We've the been time calling what's them required all the time. <laughs> what's safe what do you recommend and they're super great about it so that's how we found out about this um and we are going to drywall we have like two walls we're going to wallpaper and here's the thing shiplap comes down really easy so if later we decide we want to do something else we could take it down drywall it do a different technique whatever i personally she love means it. later like if she gets tired of it in 15 or 20 yeah, years yeah if i decide to redesign or whatever <laughs> it's really not the big of a deal and the other thing is it's prime right so if we're in a hurry <laughs> we can just put the trim up and paint as we go like well you can see it's enough. kind it's of shiny washable. jamie's like oh, i wish it wasn't so shiny it's got like a gloss kind of primer yeah, on i it. don't like glossy finishes not even in bathrooms i'm actually a big proponent of high quality satin interior paint so if you not, not like walmart or home depot brand but sherwin williams makes a high quality paint that is wipeable and i love satin because i don't like shine so that's my biggest downfall i hate that these are shiny so, all right, let's show you guys the kids' bathroom. So you can't really get in there right now. Yeah, well. The tub, tub's in the way. These lights are what's going in the bathroom. They're antique. Jamie got them at a barn sale. Yep, I got these for 20 bucks each. I actually didn't get them at a barn sale. I got them I they were at the on Facebook Marketplace. Oh, Marketplace had yeah, all the I lights. Yeah, I paid upwards of $60 for one of these, um, for the one that's in the pantry. But yeah, I got these on Facebook Marketplace and there's gonna be one. We have can lights. These are just for looksies, right? Yeah, so. so it does still have can light there and then this light will hang down from that over the box buffet. over there. So the buffet you guys saw this, over here. This buffet here that's currently holding all the drinks and glue and electrical supplies. Um, we'll get moved back in here once we get okayed on the insulation and it's already plumbed. Ironically, the that, hot and cold water come in down there and then the drain. That has the most expensive faucet in the entire house because, um, oh, let me show you the sink that's going in here, sorry. They're kind of all over the place. This is the sink. If you guys recall, we refinished these. I bought this sink for $40 and then we used that epoxy kit. It's a little dusty, but because of the way that this comes out here, you can't just go to Home Depot and buy this type of faucet. So I have a Kingston brass faucet that comes out like the old fashioned ones. And that was $250. Oh, that's, oh. <laughs> I know I paid $40 for the sink and $250 for the faucet, but I mean, it has to be right. And ironically also their tub we had, um, it's a sheet metal tub from Hungary. And I think I only paid like $300. For this it is the tub she's talking I had about. It imported. We 
decided not to use the original cast iron because it's so heavy for a second floor. Um, we will refinish this, and this is a really long tub, but it's an antique sheet metal tub from Hungary. It goes right it's over there. Heat. It's gonna go right over there. We also have another lighting fixture that will go in here. Um, kind of give you an idea of this bathroom. Still, still got to fluff and staple all this insulation. Sorry, bright light. Um, this is, has a big rain shower head. We had to have one that came quite a bit of ways out of the wall because it's going to go down into the, the clawfoot sheet metal tub. And then there's also another separate faucet that's like the old fashioned kind that sit on the tub. And that's it was that right around here. here. Where'd it go? Um, I don't know, actually. And then I'm going to see if I can find it. One of the things to keep in mind if you're going to be installing a clawfoot tub. Uh, it's gone on walkabout. That's all right. It's probably in the garage. Might be. I was going to tell one of the things to keep in mind when you're buying a clawfoot tub is that you have to have a hoop shower rod. You cannot just go to the store and buy these. Oh, I just whacked myself in the face. So this one I ordered off of Amazon. It's matte black, of we course. We have a picture of what it'll look like assembled. Uh, maybe. Does there one on that? Probably not. It's from Amazon. Probably made in China. Instructions are interesting. Okay, so there oh, yeah. you can kind of see how the shower head comes over. So this is a hanging shower head. It's matte black. It goes around it. You need that with a cloth foot tub to keep the water in. So make sure you guys think ahead for that. So this hallway is all the way done. This actually went, went up really easy because this wall here was just over. Actually, do I have to cut these? Nope, they're not nope. cut. This is exactly eight feet. So this was like so satisfying to just put this wall up. This wall was a little bit shorter. We just cut to fit. And same thing with this. I mean, these are all, when you don't have to make cuts, it's easy. Oh, something we'll probably get asked about. We are leaving the nail holes because when you find old shiplap behind lath and plaster, it still has all the nails in it. And so we're just gonna leave the nail holes so you can see them. Maybe someday we'll come back with some lightweight and I, <clears throat> fill I them all so. in, but. <laughs> We did it in the old part of the house. You can't even hardly tell. And oh, it Zeb, looks, don't walk it back I, anymore. I see, I see that it's back there. Um, but you can't even hardly tell and it looks, it looks like it's period. Yeah, I did stop. So you guys will see that I stopped up there. We, the jury's out. I need to do some pricing, but we may just wind up doing like a flat floorboard that just goes up to the top. Um, and then what we'll do is take all the little shiplap ends and just space it out up there and then staple the floorboard to that so that way it's flush and it'll kind of hide where the beadboard ceiling meets up with the shiplap. So something to keep in mind is how you're going to trim. So when I put the shiplap up, I decided I was going to trim this side. So I wasn't worried if this wasn't completely um, flush, but I made sure this was perfect. And then I made sure on this side that we'll be able to do the same thing. And we'll We're not going to do a corner trim? No, I, we might put it there or we might just put it right here. Even if we just did like small little pieces, I think corner trim would be Yeah, good. we might go on both sides. But yeah, keep that in mind when you're doing shiplap. You do are going to have some weird end situations. But yeah, we can show them a little bit of the... That's about the, the extent of the, uh, the shiplapping. She has a big wall downstairs in the family room that she's finished. Yeah, we'll show you that here a little bit. This is the other sink. Sorry, we had a water leak. Um, this is the other sink that's going in the laundry room. And lucky for me, I was $100, but it came with the faucet. Um, I did spray paint this and then we bought new little majigger things. What is, what are these little the covers, tabs? The cover tabs. And this just kind of fits on here like this. So if you can find an old sink, but the faucet's kind of grody, I just soaked this for a million years in toilet bowl cleaner. We thought we were gonna leave it copper, but then it started looking weird. So we did a, like a matte black spray paint like the super high quality high heat stuff for it and then these were free cabinets and they are black which i'm going to leave Zeb is shocked but we have a lot of white <laughs> going in and they're really high quality um we got them from a cabinet shop going out of business they're not mdf they're all wood even on awesome. the sides so they look awesome i think i'm going to do white porcelain knobs on these because i feel like the contrast will be really good we're gonna have white shiplap and then there's gonna be upper cabinets all the way on top that match this. And you guys can hear the heater running. It is functional running right now. It lives right above the playroom and the laundry room. It's a, it's, it kind of looks a mess because of all the wires and things, but it works great, so I don't care. 
Um, and this is where the washer and dryer go. There's gonna be space in the middle. I have a black laundry cart that I'm hoping will fit in between the washer and dryer. Oh, it should. That's pretty um, wide space there. Yeah, so I think that's gonna work out really well. You'll have to figure out what you're gonna do with that situation. That probably should have been moved over. It has to go there for the drain. Go. Can you move that over? See how I had to put the P-trap on for the vent? Oh. It had well, to, it had to be. Good, because I don't want that. Those it's okay. You can make a little curtain for it. A little curtain. Just a tiny little baby curtain. Whatever. <laughs> mechanics and me don't mix. I, Deb, Deb worries about the mechanics. I worry about the design. On this side, we have an extra two uppers. So I'm going to put an upper cabinet here, an upper cabinet there, and then big, long, open shelving in between for decoration. <laughs> It'll hold the fancy soap jars that she has that have all the scent beads in them. Yeah, I'll be like, don't use those. Just use the ones in the cabinet, but those are for pretty. And then another design feature that I thought was really cool um, is I'm leaving this open under the sink because I can put my laundry baskets under there. I hate laundry baskets all over the laundry room, so they're going to all go under there. And then there's actually a lot of room. Like, there's this much space between the washer and dryer and the countertops, which is great because we usually have a lot of laundry piled in here. And also, if I can convince Zeb, there'll be one of those old light fixtures in here too. He forgot to wire it, so might not happen. It's got, it's already got the fan and two can lights in there. I think it's good on lighting, but we'll see. We could just mount it and not put a bulb in there. There you go. Just for looks. So this is gonna have the same railing as we're gonna have downstairs, but it's tall. We bought big newel posts, so they're ginormous keep everybody nice and safe. There'll be three newel posts and banisters across here. That gives you an idea there. All right, you can hear Harrington down here. He's home for Thanksgiving. He probably will, if he does next semester, he's, he, it, it, the verdict is out. He's an adult now, so he's making his own big boy decisions. If he goes to school next semester, it'll be here in Utah. What happened to your shoelaces? They don't have them. No, those have shoelaces. Look at the big shiplap wall. Oh. First wall that I did in here, and I feel like I've learned a lot. Don't worry about this situation because this is going to happen. So what she did was she was lining the boards up so that they would hit a stud on the other end, and so we're gonna. I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll trim that out. That'll all be covered. So. Yeah, and also we have all these odds and end pieces, so I might fit every other one with the odds and end piece, so that way we have something to staple to for the trim. But when you're using shiplap, you have to hit a stud. And I don't like wasting boards. So if I can slide it one way or the other, I do that. We actually did, should we tell them what we bought for this wall? Uh, you can tell, can, them, you can tell them about your Costco find. Okay. Black so Friday Costco shopping got Jamie. We bought an 82 inch TV. I don't know if you know this about us, but we are TV junkies. And so this is our family room. It was like $1,200 at Costco. And the way I afforded it is, we have these smart bulbs going in. They're like 20 bucks a piece. But Costco had, if you buy eight of these smart cans, you got $20 off of two packs. It was like $40 off of eight, but you could only buy two packs. So I got all my friends with Costco memberships to order them for me and ship them here. And so I saved like $400 on lights. So I put that towards my TV fund. And then we found out at Lowe's, if you spend over $1,500, you get the pro, if you're a pro, you get a pro discount. You gotta it's sign like, up to be uh, Lowe's Pro and you go to the pro desk and-, and they discount it. Well, they what do they do PO. is they run it through like their system and they're like, okay, this is what the wholesale price on how much you're buying would be. And it, it usually saves us hundreds of dollars. Yeah, so we wound up saving about $1,000 yesterday. So between the light <laughs> savings and the pro savings, mama bought a TV. Although, who's more excited about it? You know who's going to be hanging out watching that TV all day. My dad. <laughs> and my, I told my dad, I said, while the kids are at school, the 82 inch is yours. When they get home, you're going to have to share it. So we'll see how that goes. But Zeb, the first thing he did after I bought it was he came home. He measured, like, how big does that? You oh, if you want to you hold want the to camera, I can show him. If you guys don't like TVs, you won't be impressed. It's, really, it's really kind of silly. Where'd my tape measure go that I had here? All right. Hold on, gotta find my tape measure. 
Well, All right, while well, he's looking for a tape measure, I'm going to show you. It's, 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 the banister is in, if you guys haven't seen that. We went live last week and showed you guys that. So the upstairs railing will look just like that, only a little bit taller. And then that same design theme is going to carry up these stairs. A very traditional, classic banister. All right. All right, so you got to measure diagonally because it's 82 inches on the diagonal. So that's... I got it right at 82 at the end over there. So that's how big this TV is going to be. So basically, you won't see shiplap on this wall. You'll see TV. Well, and we'll frame out the uh, TV. Yeah, well, if you guys have seen our master bedroom makeover that we I did. I think you have to use Zepp's better at holding the camera. Oops. Finger. Put my hand on it. Um, if you look at the master bedroom redo that we did, oh, it's probably been two years ago now. We took old salvage wood and framed out the, uh, the TV, and it, it looks great. And it's a great way to kind of like I like things that are period correct, but I also like to watch TV. We also own the world's largest sectional. It's 15 feet long by 10 foot deep. And we actually designed this giant family room around that sectional. It's not necessarily pretty, but it's comfortable. So it was not cheap, but it's down. So it gets kind of lumpy. So you got to chop it. All right. Did you bring the tile with you to show them? You had oh. it. You were packing it around. I don't know what you did. Why don't you it. walk them in, show them the window that's being installed, the transom. We forgot to show the transom upstairs, but. Um, it's kind of dim in here. Grab the light too, could you? The light? It's underneath the, it's over underneath the island. All right. So we've shown the bathroom a few times, but we've got some walls in here. I think Jamie showed it the other day. You can see this foam insulation instead of trying to stuff insulation behind the wall. So this is R8 per inch and we're pretty much full on six inches. So that's, it's almost R38. <laughs> this one also has a bench. Yep, yeah, bench going in here in this shower and we're the jury's out. We haven't decided once we get the actual install going, we might cut the corner here so it's not completely square, but maybe not. Um, we'll see. And this is the shower head that she was trying to show you. So we you have want to come hold that up so they can see? Yeah, so we actually have two of these for our shower and then my parents have one too. I can't even, I can't even hold it. Can't even lift it good? There we go. So it's like a big rain shower head and then it has a separate... It has a wand and, and you can adjust the, the wand up and down too. This is the foot faucet. And the wand comes off and you can whatever, you know. Wash, you turn this wash on, your you hair. wash your feet. Um, but yeah, those were a couple hundred dollars each uh, at, on Amazon. I did a lot of research. They were the least expensive with the most value. You could definitely spend way more than $200 for them. <laughs> this is not going to stay this tall. <laughs> so I had down. that length of pipe when I was down in the crawl space putting that in. So I'm just like, oh, that's getting glued in. Yeah, um, because this is my parents' shower, obviously they have a bench too because my dad needs to sit while he showers. And it's nice because literally you walk in from here, you turn it on and they can just sit down. Um, it's also made, it'll be zero entry. So they, if they ever have to wheel in and we're making sure to keep this open to fit them in. So let's show tile. You guys see this? Yeah, there we go. So this is the backsplash tile. This is the Carrera marble. It's in the kitchen. It's in the kitchen. And then this is the marble tile going on the floor. So this will be like this, which doesn't look, it's kind of a neutral classic look. We're using a medium gray grout. So that's going to really make all of this pop. Um, I didn't want to go black because that would have been weird. And then also what we didn't tell you um, on the bench tops, instead of doing like a tile where you actually ordered remnant countertops and it'll have a solid surface on all the seats to the benches really economical we spent 130 dollars for three bench tops the guy gave us a good deal but they're just remnant pieces because you don't need that much so if you never like if you ever need to get that done just go to your cabinet guy or the countertop guy and just say hey i've got a bench this big what remnant pieces do you have and see if they'll give you a deal he wanted to make his harley payment so he's like just venmo me but don't put what it is i think i put stuff yeah so. he was an interesting guy but you know he was he had tons of uh, good remnants, so we'll probably see him again, maybe for the uh, laundry room countertop. Oh, price point. This is the least expensive marble tile that Lowe's had to offer. It's $3.98 a sheet. You can spend up to like $15 a sheet for these. Um, and this is from Riyadh Tile. This is like a high-end Carrera marble. So one thing to consider when you're using marble, 
you have to seal it really, really well because it stains. So keep that in mind. And you have to reseal it every few years. All right, we've got that. Oh, we've got two antique windows going in here. Um, we, you, we're gonna have new tempered glass put in them. And one of the things we get asked is how do you put what wood windows in? But we're going to paint them with, on the inside, with exterior paint. If you use interior paint, it's not gonna hold up to the water. I'm also gonna use Rain X on the glass, so that'll keep it from getting spotted. Um, you just have to reapply that every so often. But if you're gonna be doing something like this, make sure the inside has exterior grade paint because it's gonna repel the water. Well, and then it's not like there's gonna be direct water spraying on those. They may occasionally get splashed, but the rain head shower heads, they, they shoot straight down pretty much. So Yeah, so it, this one might get more because you can sit there and maybe my parents will like hit it with a wand, but it won't be bad. Another fun thing that we're doing. Oh yeah, show them this window here. We have a window upstairs. We forgot to show you guys, but we're doing transom windows. So this window. Hold it up high. Hold on. There you go. go. Well, way higher. But it'll it'll go, go all the way up, but going to go in between here and we have the same something similar this is from my window wall if you guys have seen it the house i live in i've been pilfering the, the window wall is only got one window on it now <laughs> i know because we installed another window there's the, this window here is also an antique window off the window wall when you're doing antique windows check with your code ours is fine because they found that they're actually really energy efficient you just have to seal them because they, if they got air leakage through their drafts, that's where you lose your energy efficiency. Um, oh, another thing that you want to keep in mind, we are doing beadboard ceilings in here. So we are leaving it open on top. Do so you want to show them? So it'll be open above that. This will be framed in so that way it doesn't get too steamy. So there's a fan. I did have to vent these fans out to the exterior. That's one thing that I missed when we did our four-way inspection. I didn't have the fans. They were installed, but they weren't vented. And they have to go out to the exterior of the house because you don't want like mold and mildew and moisture building up in your in your crawl space or in your joists here in between on the floor joists or even up in the rafters or the trusses. Yeah, upstairs. I'm super excited about that though because we have so much wood in our house. Like we have all wood flooring, even in the bathroom. So that's really gonna keep moisture out, it's gonna keep things from like warping and getting gross. I did have to cut an ex a hole in the side of the building for Jamie's pretty uh, pretty house. But, and it's on the side. And it's high, like she's never gonna see it. It's it's like up there about 10 and a half feet. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> good. Um, let's see what else in here we've got. You guys have seen this before, but this is the vanity that we did like a million years ago. And we've got this sink we picked up from the ReStore for like five bucks. Um, and then the faucet, Amazon, 30 bucks. And then this is a light fixture. Remember, we had this in the kitchen. We love it. We're going to repurpose this light fixture. It's got the milky, milk glass um, shades. It's going to go, if I can get it up there, above here. So white ship lap walls in here. And then... So hopefully... Did you see if our Monday when we, fits in there? Monday when we pass, because we'll pass. Yeah, Monday we're going to pass. We are going to... Um, once once that gets done and the insulation gets okayed you're going to see all these walls go in and then all the fixtures are going to start getting put in because the between the ceiling and the walls and the fixtures it's really like we're done with inspections until the final yeah and they so we'll probably move in before the final oh sorry i got like dust all over me um but our inspector gal is really great she's like i'll come in and tell you what has to be done um, I do have an antique medicine cabinet. I need to see if it's going to fit. I already steps. looked. It's like twice that wide. Oh. It's not going to fit. Yeah, that's that's no bueno. We might have to talk about that off camera. Because <laughs> I've had it for a while. All right. This is my parents' bedroom. So, my dad already has clothes. So this is an interior wall that we've insulated because over here, this is this is like the guest suite, right? There's TV mounted on the wall here. It's gonna be like a hotel or whatever. It's like competing TVs. So we got a TV on the wall here and then a TV on the wall out here. This is the family room wall. And so that's why we've got the insulation just to kind of cut down on the noise a little bit. Um, yeah, and my parents are gonna live in here. They're notoriously hard of hearing. So we wanna make sure they can turn their TV up and then they're not disturbed by the TV on the other side, so. 
Also give them a little privacy since that's like a main living area. Yeah. They're the only bedroom off a of main living area. When we built this, we didn't know my parents were going to be living with us. We just wanted a main floor guest suite because we have a lot of family. And I thought I'd use this for seasonal storage, but it's going to house my parents' stuff. My dad already has an extra change of clothes here. He, he, he brought it and put it in his closet. Yeah. My mom's <laughs> excited. It's a good size walk-in closet. And one of the things we're going to be doing in a closet, it has nine foot ceilings, just like the rest of the house. The paneling we're putting in here is only eight feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a shelf go all the way around at the eight foot level and it's going to cover that seam where I can't get that to, I have to strap that down line. still. Um, where it'll cover the seam where the beadboard meets up and really kind of hide that situation. So all the, all the closets will be like that. So we're super excited. Um, this is why we don't necessarily have any live videos going on right now. Underneath the here. edited videos have been being put up because we just we got to meet these inspection deadlines so we can get moved in. Under the stairs is going to be the reading nook. So we framed this out. So this will all have shiplap, 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 beadboard going up here. And there'll be a big bench that opens up because the crawl space is directly below here. And we've got to have access to that. So the bench was my solution to that situation. Although, you know what? There was supposed to be a light under here. Did you not wire that? I, I still have to do that. Okay. I for, just remembered that. I know we talked about it. So we'll yeah. get that done. This is the... Uh, That's the temporary thermostat. It's set to 65 degrees. <laughs> fun situation there. Um, let's see. What else? Design-wise. We get asked about this wall a lot. It is stained. This is the last remaining brick. Um, and it's the only brick that they did not cover up. So we're leaving this. You can see where it used in. to be covered, where it's not painted good. Well, this is what went into like the old um, basement. And this was like what was inside the house. So they did not clean that part. But you can see we ripped this down and then this is kind of clean in here. But we're gonna, I'll fill the holes. This will all get painted. Above here, there wasn't solid brick. I'm gonna show them up there. So that's going to get shipped. That's where the eaves were and the soffit for the old yeah. part of the house that we had to cut off of this section so that we could fit the mudroom and the addition in right here. So this is like probably gets the most amount of questions. This is all going to have a big casing in here. So this will stay open to the, the original part of the home. And then this the dishwasher section. and the stove are getting all their plumbing and hooked up. That's why they're pulled out. <laughs> we wanted to try to do Thanksgiving here, but we had the wrong part, so we gave up. Oh, the floor, we put in the floor. Remember how we used to have to step up? So this now completely, you can see that it matches. Zeb did an amazing job. The new floors, old floors, completely level. So seamless from the old part of the house to the new part of the house, it's kind of, it's kind of a big deal. That was a lot of math to get the addition to match that. <laughs> yeah, kind of a big deal on that one. Um, so here is the water faucet. This will be going in probably early next week. As soon as we get the okay to from from the inspector on the insulation, we're gonna shiplap this wall, and then we will go ahead right and put that drinking fountain in. So we have a drinking fountain. It's from LK. They did a brand deal with us, so it was really nice of them. We'll let you guys see that install. Um, I think it was around a thousand ish dollars. We bought the one that doesn't have the water cooler feature and it doesn't have the filter so that it doesn't need any electric. And my reasoning for that is we actually have a whole house water filter. So there's no need to have one on the system. So it's just one less thing that won't break. And sometimes those like refrigeration units on water fountains can be kind of loud and living in Utah, our water all comes off the mountain. It's cold even in the summer. So no need for that. And it has a bottle filler, which is really eco-friendly. I'm hoping it keeps kids from getting like a million and three uh, water cups. They could just come here. Neighborhood kids come. They can get their own drinks without going into the Well, kitchen. we have the basketball hoop in the driveway, so they can just come in here, get their drink, go right back out. Yeah, and eventually when there's a pool, I'm hoping they can just come in off the back, get a drink, go back, right back out. Yeah, pool's a long shot. But anyways, that was my thinking with that. It's kind of narrow, so we've actually already got a coat rack that we made from old salvaged wood that'll go here, kind of create the mudroom. We're leaving the old antique window in here. This old wall is just gonna get a new coat of paint, so you can see that it was the old wall situation. We step down here. This is actually gonna come up a little bit, and I'm doing a faux brick 
Facade. They're like a brick tile. They're yeah, basically they're like, like bricks cut down tile thickness. Yeah, we actually have to raise um, the cement outside. So that'll actually carry through the entry. I'd open the store for you, but... We locked it and we don't have a key and we can't get it unlocked. So we got to get creative and get that out of there. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's an antique door, but it's locked. We can't get it unlocked. Um, so if you want to show the knob on this, it's pretty fantastic. Yeah. So we found the most beautiful knob and I love this. We went ahead and painted this door black. We salvaged it. I think this door was um, like $80, maybe. Yeah. We did order new glass, so that's why there's paint on here, because this is the original glass. We can't save it, it's not safe, so we've Has got to be tempered, tempered glass. So that's coming out, we'll put tempered glass in there. But this actually matches the front door really, really well. So, you guys wanna see the garage? No. Tons and tons of materials in here. Lots I, of insulation hiding over there. The trailer is full on insulation, so you know. That's what this is what construction looks like. But I've actually cleaned out the garage. I know it doesn't look like it, but try different old keys for that door. Yeah, probably. well, they probably made like one size fits all and then mailed out or then shipped out like hundreds of them. Well, you're supposed <laughs> to be able to. So you push a button and that's what locks it. We have the same lock on our front door. And we pushed it and it worked. And so we just locked it and then done. All right, we'll take you inside. I know you guys have a lot of seen this part of it. But. Yeah, we, uh, we wanted to show you the Carrera marble. So this backsplash here is the same marble that'll be in the bathroom. And this has like a light grate uh, grout. So you can't see the grout lines as much, which is good because I installed this. This is also from Riyadh Tile. Yeah, this is also from Riyadh Tile. And this is one of those light fixtures. Zeb actually made that entire fixture that's just copper piping. And we have a there video was a not, live. Waste Not Wednesday video on that. Yeah, and we made the round behind it. Um, the window's super deep. We have strategically placed open shelving to cover up a very big wave in the wall right there. <laughs> Old houses are fun. Um, countertops, I've got to put more oil wax on them. I showed you guys, uh, last time we went live, I showed you that I had some issues because I forgot to wipe off the oil wax. It sanded right off. So I just need to do another coat of oil wax and it'll be good. She says sanded right off. She used 60 grit on it. Um, yeah, I did. And then I softened it with 220, but it may took like 30 minutes. So yeah, it wasn't, ever, it wasn't that hard. If you guys ever use oil wax and you don't wipe it off like you're supposed to in 30 minutes, you can go ahead and just sand it off. You'll be fine. These, this island, actually, um, we got oil wax on it. We get asked about it all the time. We have eaten on it and it's cleaned right up. What oil wax does is it soaks down into the wood so it doesn't absorb other things. We actually did, where was it? Right here, we got some black paint on it accidentally, so I gotta re-oil wax that. So that's the nice thing about having wood countertops. If you get stuff on them, you could just sand it off and then re-oil wax it. Super easy. Um, Zeb's gonna put drawers under here someday. Right now, it houses all the stuff. Our island is nine foot long, right? Uh, yes. Yep, that's gonna have a curtain, so you won't see that. We have cabinets. We get asked a lot, like, where all of our stuff is going to go. We have a butler's This pantry. is the window going out to the mudroom. Yep. And we can fit five bar stools. Um, these are the ones we did for Wayne So, So the floor is a mess, right? We've been in here. We've been working. We've been hauling stuff in and out. We've been sanding. Um, it, cleans it cleans right up. Yeah, we've cleaned it since we've put it in, and it works really good. If you want decorating tips, I'm happy to offer them. <laughs> you can cover your couch with the original cover and then add some pillows just kidding we have this is our couch that we ordered so it's covered and this is actually i can't remember who it was so forgive me but one of our viewers came by the shop and brought me this cute blanket so i keep it on the back of the couch to protect it you have the note don't you yes at the shop i keep all my notes there so i know if i look it up i can find it this is not attached everybody always says oh it's not level we have to shim it so don't worry it's it's hundred year old wood out of the rafters in the old part of the house, so yeah. it's it's got it's got a fun little twist in it. The island and the mantle are all made with wood that we demoed from the, the original hundred year old home, so that's great. Fireplace is non functional. Tile is stenciled, and uh, it's one of our JRV stencils. One of our JRV stencils. People come in and they actually think it's real tile, which I am pretty impressed by. It did take me probably a good six to eight hours. To get it right because I messed up a few times, but it turned out good. The thing about this is that if we would have installed the tile, we would have had like a weird lip or we would have had to inset the floor. And then back here, it's like cement, 
So I literally, we bondoed all the cracks in these big pieces of wood they had here. And then I just carried the tile right on through, super easy. Quarters were a little complicated, then we just did a black border to separate it. It's actually still not sealed. <laughs> Someday that'll get sealed. It's milk paint, so really once milk paint cures, pretty good. <laughs> Zeb's birthday balloons still going my, my strong. My birthday balloons, they won't die. Gosh, the, ceiling. the ceiling is like, we we spent quite a bit of money on a structural engineer to figure this out so that it was earthquake safe and strong and can handle our snow load so in I the winter. So I would say this ceiling probably cost a good $20,000. If you consider what we had to do above the ceiling, the insulation, the engineering. Yeah, we redid things. the whole roof up above and insulated it up above. So it does have insulation, R38 up above the rafters here. And then I shingled over that. There's no vent, it's a ventless system because there's no airflow. There, there are still nails that we've got to cut out of it. I've noticed there is some bleed through. I mean, you picture it's the old stick frame ceiling from a hundred years. There's been so much water through it and stuff. So we will, over time, fix everything that's imperfect about it. But for now, I love it. Everybody that comes in is like, oh my goodness. So the thing about, so there's that, there's that beadboard going yeah, vertical on the wall. We'll trim that, but. That, that still needs trim. You know, lots of little stuff we have to wrap up, but priorities, right? Yeah, the, <laughs> the fridge and freezer do work. We are gonna trim out the front and they'll get pushed back so they don't protrude. That's what we call. This is the fridge and freezer garage. They're also not level right now, but another one of our splurge items, one I bought on clearance, the other one I bought on sale, I think it was about $3,000, which is pretty good. I think they cost like four to 5,000 maybe. Yeah, good well one price. we saved like $1,000 on because it had been returned. Yeah, but we have uh, five, six, seven. How many people live with us? Nine, Nine with Harrington. When Harrington's gone, it's eight, but even when he moves out, I'm sure that he's gonna be here. So we have to have a lot of fridge and freezer space. Um, this Zeb and I built. So to clarify, someone was upset the other day that we didn't have a space for Harrington. Uh, he does not want to live with us. He's a, he's a full grown boy now. He's an adult and he is very aggressively looking for a place to live with his buddies from high school. Yeah. And he's super <laughs> like he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to live with mom and dad anymore. <laughs> he has his own money. He actually, I'm going to tell you right now, like the entire semester he was away at college, he spent $0 uh, or asked us for $0 of money. So I was pretty impressed. I thought for sure that was going to hit up. This is the dining room in here. We can't have a chandelier over the dining room table because there's a giant beam. So we, to kind of make it look special, we added these sconces. The beam ruined all your chandelier dreams. Yeah, you know, I... I but you know, all these chandelier. big lights, when you turn them on, it looks, I think it looks pretty good. We did add, so there's can lighting installed. We have a they probably won't be able to hear you oh. echoey way over there. All right. <laughs> so there's can lighting up there too. So we've got these lights, but they, they cast some weird shadows in a few areas. So there's two cans in here, so that way the dining room isn't dim. And how many cans do we put in the kitchen? One, there are 12, two, oh, three, four. Four, four can lights in the four kitchen. Can. And yeah. then 12 big industrial lights from Ikea. These lights were like 20 bucks on clearance. The cans we had to do before we finished the roof because and, they- And the one random fly. Sorry, there's like four flies, but if you're gonna put cans in a roof like this, you have to do it before you roof because yeah. There's no attic in here. So we had to make that decision. This opens up, this is like a 12 foot wall or 14 feet, I'm not really um, sure. It's, I, think it, I think it's about 11 up to that. Um, there you go. We still, we're trimming up above that. It'll match kind of like what this does here. You can see this trim we put in the other day that just goes up to the rafter and then there's a little cavity back there, but it's all insulated and sealed up, so. Yeah, it kind of finishes it. This is the quarter, like instead of quarter round, we use like a coved molding. This will actually go in every corner of the house. This is a really great way to hide seams. I've seen quarter round put in, but it looks weird. This is better because it's a little bit more minimal. And this is not the MDS shiplap. This is pine. So you can see it's got Gaps, some imperfections on the gap and ir irregularities and it's not it completely a uniform and, and Jamie actually loves it more. I do love it more. <laughs> it took me a month to do this. I don't have a month to do the other house. You have to prime it. It has knots in it. 
Um, these we get asked a lot. We bought them wholesale. They no longer carry them. You can't get this light fixture. So lots of people are concerned white on white on white on white on white, but we've got lots of color. You know, you bring the black in, you do the floor, the Christmas tree over there. Uh, the Our fun, table is natural wood. The fun buffet over here. Yeah. So this it's couch, that's a good angle. I don't think they've seen a lot of that. This couch is actually probably going to go on. I'm that standing side. in the very back corner of the dining room. Yeah. So this. So you can see the whole mess all at once. We actually couldn't add more windows, so that's the other thing for the white because surprisingly enough, even with the windows we have, it's not super bright because we actually have these huge eaves that have beadboard. It's our eaves are probably like this big. The soffit is the 30 soffit. inches. 30 inches. Which is not standard. 24 is on the big side. 12 is what most and our houses front porch have. Which is like ginormously deep. That's why we bought the house. The beadboard on the front porch is amazing. So, anyways, white just keeps it a lot brighter in here. We did add a skylight. So, I know we've showed a lot of people that. People ask us why we did a skylight. Um, it's in there because this is where the original cooking stove was, and there was a chimney. So we had a hole, and I was like, let's put a skylight in there. And it wasn't just like a small round chimney. It was, it was like a big, big brick chimney. <laughs> yeah. So it was the perfect size. We just cut a little bit more, and we're able to install a skylight. So that made a lot of sense. You can show you the pantry. It's a hot mess. This is the behind the scenes live video where everything has got a fun layer of dust and all kinds of mess everywhere because I'm basically living here and so does Jamie's dad and then the kids come home from school and they dump all their treats and snacks. Buy these. Ooh, those are delicious. Them. Those are good. Yeah. Those are our fun snacks. Here the light works. Yeah, the light, light works light in here. This actually is going to get two more cans because there's some weird dim spots. Um, but these cabinets are going to house all of our stuff because people ask us in our kitchen like, where is your cabinet space? It's in here. So the pantry, this, we have this big upper here, and these are all just Home Depot cabinets. We put beadboard, real beadboard on the side, pine beadboard, so that way it looks like a cabinet. And then the microwave's gonna fit in here, and then we've got almost like a hutch situation happening here that we built in, we trimmed out the top. It's yeah, the, the microwave, all these counters will be cleared off. There away. might be like a mixer in here. And no, the then, mixer's probably going to go out there. Are you going to put the mixer out there? I don't know. because uh, She's not decided. I haven't decided because the mixer's beautiful, but also Eliza, this is her baking station. All the supplies are going to be under here, so she might want the mixer in here. Eliza does do a lot of baking. Kids watch TV in here, so. Yeah, if Jack has to, and Jack, if Jack and Redrick like have to hang out and it's cold, too cold to be playing basketball, they come in here and they watch TV. Well, and the bench <laughs> goes over here, but they've moved it here so they can watch the TV. This is the cart, actually, that I was talking about. Yeah, that'll totally fit. This is the laundry cart that's going to go. It's got, like, a hanging bar, so it's kind of fun. We've got the glass in here, safe from uh, the, for the door being replaced. We've got this hutch, too. This is more storage. This I picked up for 40 bucks. It fits perfectly in here. We just had to cut off this one side here so this is going to be a ton of storage and then i'll probably put hooks. where are we at on time this has been long and oh, i gotta I get know. back to work <laughs> all right zeb is starting to look bored not bored i'm just thinking about your inspection monday and i still have to insulate okay. the entire and i gotta ceiling. go to di i gotta get to the store so all right guys show them the back because this is kind of pretty so this is backyard it's not pretty right now it's no, a mess just like everything else the chickens see this is I haven't been able to make any dump runs for all the construction debris because we've been hauling insulation and beadboard and shiplap. Yes, so no, it's accumulating old. right now. This is my largest old window back here that's painted. I got to clean the glass. So this is the old window that we installed in the new part of the house. Those are the French doors on the outside. This one doesn't have a handle yet. I, mean, I think your chickens need some water. They probably do. They're we looking actually, at me like they want a snack. We only have 10 chickens. We got rid of eight roosters because the hens were a little tired, if you know what I mean. So anyways. All right, there's the fun behind the scenes tour of what we have going on, what we've been doing for the last week while we haven't been doing lots of videos. Uh, and you got to see the nitty gritty construction debris and dirt everywhere. Yep. Uh, no, no pretty pictures today. <laughs> it's small business Saturday, guys. So make sure you're hitting up your local small boutiques and businesses, bakeries, etc. A lot of them are doing specials. If you're local to Lehigh, we've got 20% off our entire shop. Um, it's like the biggest sale we've ever done. We've never done so many items on the website for sale. Yeah. And the stencils are 50% off. Well, that's, that's just in-store 20% off of everything. Oh, in-store 20% doesn't... off. No, I was talking about the websites. Oh, yeah. So, I, sh I shifted gears on you. Uh, if you're not <laughs> local to Lehigh, we have on JRV Home, 
We have 20% off at entire Black Friday collection, and then the clothes are buy two, get two free. And then um, on jamierayvintage.com, we have 20% off milk paint, stencil brushes, 50% off a uh, uh, selection of new stencils. Yep. And what else? Zipper brushes are 20% off. Yeah. So anyways, none of that needs codes. So make sure you're hitting up uh, JRV Home and jamierayvintage.com. Those sales actually end on Monday. So you've got a couple days to get that in there. November 30th, they end at midnight. 2020. 2020. All right, love you guys. Support Small Business for Small Business Saturday. Thanks for watching us. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Love you guys. And messy Bye. house tours. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully next time it's clean.